Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes How a JP Morgan star faded at Hong Kong Stock Exchange. China's 30-year yield hits lowest since 05 on deposit rate cuts. Hong Kong court rejects activist publisher Jimmy Lai's bid to throw out sedition charge. Chinese stocks misery extends for a record third straight year. Amid U.S.-China rivalry, Vietnam sweet spot diplomacy is a master class. How a J.P. Morgan star faded at Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Financial Times. Nicholas Aguizan, who announced he would be stepping down as CEO of Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, HKEX, in May, faced criticism during his tenure for unconventional ideas such as proposing to award tokens to listed companies based on the diversity of their boards. Aguizan's critics argue that these ideas, along with his decision to invite FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried to address the exchange's leaders, indicated that he may not have been the right person to lead HKEX during a difficult period. Since Aguizan joined HKEX, the exchange's share price has dropped 40 percent and it has fallen behind rival CME and Intercontinental Exchange in terms of market capitalization. Hong Kong has struggled to maintain its status as a financial hub due to a disappointing post-pandemic recovery and rising tensions between Beijing and Washington. However, Aguizan's supporters argue that he has initiated important reforms and raised Kex's profile globally. Hong Kong IPOs have declined significantly since July 2021, and the market is on track for its smallest annual haul in 22 years. China's 30-year yield hits lowest since 05 on deposit rate cuts. Bloomberg Chinese government bonds have rallied after reports that large state-owned banks are planning to cut deposit rates. This has pushed yields on 30-year sovereign notes to their lowest level since 2005. The move is expected to steer investment towards the debt market, as banks will have lower funding costs and may be more motivated to buy bonds. Individual investors and companies may also redirect their term deposits into financial products that invest in fixed income assets. Bond bulls are optimistic that the People's Bank of China will ease monetary policy next year, potentially leading to a cut in interest rates. Hong Kong court rejects activist publisher Jimmy Lai's bid to throw out sedition charge. Associated Press Hong Kong publisher and activist Jimmy Lai's bid to throw out a sedition charge against him has been rejected by a Hong Kong court. Lai, who was arrested in 2019 during the city's crackdown on dissidents, faces possible life imprisonment if convicted under a national security law imposed by Beijing. The charges against Lai include colluding with foreign forces to endanger national security and conspiring with others to publish seditious publications. The trial, which is seen as a test for judicial independence in Hong Kong, is expected to last about 80 days without a jury. Chinese stocks' misery extends for a record third straight year. South China Morning Post China's CSI 300 index is on track for its third straight year of losses, with a 14% decline this year adding to a 22% drop in 2022 and a 5.2% decline in 2021. Weak consumer spending and a downturn in the property market have exceeded expectations, and geopolitical tensions and monetary policy tightening in the U.S. have added to the sell-offs. Foreign investors have been disappointed by Beijing's growth-stabilizing measures and have been pulling out of Chinese stocks. However, some global investment banks predict a comeback for Chinese stocks in 2024, driven by cheap valuations, low investor positioning, policy support and an improvement in corporate earnings. Amid U.S.-China rivalry, Vietnam sweet spot diplomacy is a master class. South China Morning Post Vietnam is emerging as a winner of the de-risking trend, with companies relocating from China to Vietnam to avoid rising production costs and geopolitical risks. The country recently upgraded its ties with the United States and Japan and is at the center of major powers vying for influence. Vietnam has become China's largest trading partner in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and companies are using the country to bypass U.S. sanctions.
Financial firms I Hong Kong as they target rich clients, family offices. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission, SFC, has reported a surge in applications from financial firms and individuals seeking financial services licenses, despite a downturn in the capital market. The SFC received 2017 applications in Q3 2021 from 1,972 individuals and 45 companies, up 13% QOQ and 6% YOY. Oliver Ng, managing partner at DigiWealth Consulting, said the rise in applications reflected a structural change in Hong Kong's financial markets. Landmark Family Office is one of the newcomers that launched operations this year, offering wealth management, succession planning and setting up charities for rich customers. China property crisis in charts, spillover spreads across economy. Bloomberg China's real estate sector is experiencing a severe downturn, which is having a wide impact on the country's economy. Property sales have plummeted, with a 27% decline in 2022, and are expected to continue to shrink in the coming years. This downturn has led to a decrease in output in the real estate sector, which is connected to over 60 sectors in China. This has resulted in a negative impact on China's GDP growth, with property-related activity contributing 1.6 percentage points to growth in 2015 and weighing it down by 1.3 percentage points in 2022. The real estate downturn has also affected investment and government revenue, with real estate development investment and income from land sales both declining. Additionally, China's offshore bond market, which was once popular for developer debts, is all but dead, with defaults reaching $133 billion as of December 2022. As a result of the downturn, Chinese real estate moguls have seen their wealth decline by at least $97 billion, and protests related to real estate have increased. Strike that shut down English Channel Rail services is over, trains returning. South China Morning Post A wildcat strike by Eurotunnel staff has ended after six hours, with services gradually returning to normal. Eurostar passenger trains will be operational on Friday, and the rail shuttle, Le Shuttle, which carries vehicles and passengers, has begun returning to duty. The strike, triggered by an insufficient bonus, caused disruption and cancellations of 30 Eurostar passenger trains. Union representatives at Eurotunnel's French site rejected a €1,000, $1,100, end-of-year bonus and demanded that it be tripled. Eurotunnel did not disclose the specifics of the agreement that ended the strike. She fought off online attacks as the face of Canada's COVID-19 response. Now, Theresa Tam reveals just what kind of toll that took on her. The Toronto Star Canada's chief public health officer, Dr. Theresa Tam, has opened up about her experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. Tam, who has held the position for six years, has revealed that she has not contracted COVID-19 and her parents are also safe from the virus. Tam also discussed the misinformation that she has faced, including conspiracy theories linking her to Beijing and claims that she is not a woman. She urged authorities to do more to tackle the spread of misinformation and reaffirmed the importance of trust in public health. Tam called for a multifaceted approach to misinformation, involving governments, tech companies, scientists, and the media. She also called for better communication and education, particularly targeting young people. Tam's reflections come as the Canadian government is preparing to pass online harms legislation, although it is not expected to focus on misinformation. Luke Little continues Dream World Championship with victory over Andrew Gilding. The Independent 16-year-old Luke Littler has continued his impressive debut at the PDC World Championship by defeating Andrew Gilding to reach the third round. Littler, who beat Christian Kist in the previous round, won the match 3-1. Despite losing the third set, Littler showed composure and clinched a spot in the last 32. He will now face Matt Campbell. 
In other matches, Scott Williams beat 7th seed Danny Knoppert 3-0, Gabriel Clemens defeated Man Lock Leon 3-1, and Damon Hayda won 3-1 against Martin Lukeman. Former champion Rob Cross secured his spot in the third round with a 3-0 win over Thibaut Tricol. Hong Kong Tunnel Incident Just a Bump in Tolls Road SCMP Opinion Hong Kong authorities are being urged to provide a full explanation after thousands of motorists were overcharged at the start of a new time-adjusted toll system. The incident, which affected around 4,700 motorists, occurred at the Western Harbour Tunnel on Monday. Commissioner for Transport Angela Lee Chung Yen has apologized and announced an investigation. It is believed that an employee using a previous charging scheme may have been responsible for the mistake. The time-adjusted toll system is aimed at easing congestion by varying charges depending on the time of day. Hong Kong budget deficit calls for tough decisions with more storms looming. SCMP Opinion Hong Kong's financial secretary, Paul Chan Imopa, has warned that the government will face another multi-billion dollar budget deficit this year, exceeding the original forecast of 57 billion Hong Kong dollars. The coronavirus pandemic has hampered the city's post-COVID economic recovery, resulting in sluggish land sales and reduced public revenue. The city's reserves have also fallen from 1.1 trillion Hong Kong dollars to 834 billion Hong Kong dollars due to measures to fight the virus and support businesses. Chan has called for short-term solutions to help overcome the difficulties and has urged government departments to cut expenditure. OpenAI's dilemmas reflect tensions common among Asian company boards. Nikkei Asia Many boards, particularly in Asia, are grappling with tensions between shareholder returns and wider stakeholder interests. This conflict is being brought to the forefront by new pressures, such as national security concerns and the rise of environmental, social, and governance ESG, criteria. Many Asian companies have government shareholders, creating a complex dynamic between private and state interests. The use of international standards can help reconcile these tensions and ensure transparency, stability, and alignment with globally agreed norms. U.S. to gather chip supply chain intelligence to boost national security. South China Morning Post The U.S. Department of Commerce has announced that it will review how companies procure Chinese-made semiconductors in an effort to reduce national security risks. The review, set to begin in January, will focus on legacy chips that are still important to industries such as telecommunications, automotive, and defense. The department will collect data from American companies to assess their reliance on chips manufactured in China. The review comes after a report from the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party urged the Commerce Department to impose import duties on legacy semiconductors from China. And that's a wrap for today's news. As we've seen, Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing, HKEX, has been facing challenges under the leadership of CEO Nicholas Aguizan, with the exchange's share price dropping and Hong Kong's status as a financial hub being threatened. Meanwhile, Chinese government bonds have rallied as large state-owned banks plan to cut deposit rates, and Vietnam is emerging as a winner in the de-risking trend as companies relocate from China. On the other hand, China's real estate sector is experiencing a severe downturn, impacting the country's economy, and Canada's chief public health officer, Dr. Theresa Tam, has spoken out about the toll of misinformation during the COVID-19 pandemic. In sports, 16-year-old Luke Littler continues to impress at the PDC World Championship, and in Hong Kong, authorities are investigating an incident where motorists were overcharged at a toll tunnel. These stories highlight the challenges and opportunities in the region, from the struggles of financial institutions to the shifting dynamics of global trade and the impact of misinformation on public health. It's a reminder that even in the world of finance and business, unexpected events and decisions can have far-reaching consequences. As always, I encourage you to share your thoughts and opinions on these news stories. What do you make of the challenges facing HKEX and the Chinese real estate sector? 
How do you think Vietnam's de-risking strategy will play out? And what are your thoughts on the toll of misinformation during the pandemic? Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 dobriefcom Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.